Alright guys, well I got a whole bunch of stuff cleaned up and uh, I had to take this apart, completely apart, and freaking clean every individual piece because it was just caked with uh, this mud crap that was in here. So now I have to put it all back together. But I figured I would show you guys kind of how to do this. Um, this I believe is called the Paul and this is your uh, hub gear that goes in there and it uh, Basically, this is the piece that moves up and down and locks this piece here to the hub. This piece is what your axle, uh, your burr field uh, splines into. So, this is always spinning as long, no, this part's always spinning. As long as the tires are spinning, this is spinning. Um, but if you want to lock it in, this ring goes into there and then locks it in. When you wind, when you turn the dial to the unlock position, all that happens is this gear slides up to the top here so that it can still freewheel. But then again when you turn the dial it moves the gear down and locks it in. So that's how the manual locking hub works. Now I've got to rebuild mine. So it's got a top and a bottom. The top part has got uh, this kind of half the teeth missing and it's got a lip inside it. The bottom part is mostly gear. Uh, the pawl has got a spring inside of it and the spring will thread into that little lip there. You can kind of see it going in like that. It's a little bit tricky but it can be done. Okay, well I got this guy assembled again. I actually took the metal ring off from the spring, put the spring in properly, and then assembled the metal piece onto it. But there's these little lips here and here that the spring rests on, and then these two lips here, either one, is for that little uh, catch piece on it. So now this guy's assembled. Um, I have to reassemble this gauge. When you're taking this apart, be extremely careful because there is a little ball bearing that sits in here. And that guy is what uh, actually locks into these grooves cut out here and here. Uh, before I put that on, I should have put the O-ring on. And now, this goes on a certain way. Um, you'll see a little notch at the bottom there. Um, take the ball bearing off and show you guys. Okay, see that ridge there and that ridge there? Those are the ones that ride and they'll stop on that. That's basically the stop for to tell it when to stop. So it'll only go so far. Now that I've explained that, I'll throw this guy back together. Be extremely careful not to lose that ball bearing. There. Okay, and now the snap ring goes on. I like this snap ring because you don't need special snap ring pipes, you can just use your needle nose. Now this guy's assembled. Now it's a lot more free moving. If you want, you could have put some lube in there, and I probably should have, but I forgot because I was making a video. Freak sakes. But anyways, um, this part's kind of fun sometimes. These two little lip things here that I explained that the spring sits underneath and catches on, they'll fit in either side of these grooves. So when you're assembling this, line up the open slots push it on and just give her a little twist and that's all there is to hooking that up. Then when you're putting this back into this those little lips on that part you can see that one there and there's one 180 degrees on the other side they line up with these two that have the freaking middle piece cut out of them. And of course it's this is in the lock position right now so 
Now it's in free view. So again, we line those up, and our bolt holes should line up. That's all there is to reassemble one of these. So I'm going to take it all apart, grease her up, and then uh, throw her in.